For the year 2020, I'm making a video review for every new movie I watch, whether in theaters or at home, and on August 28th, I watched Lady Bird. Welcome to my year in movies. This is Talking to Myself. So Lady Bird is one of those films that I should have watched so long ago, and it just took me forever to get around to it because it's got Sir Ronan, whom I adore. I love her in everything she's in. Um, and this was like a huge film for her, like she was up for Oscars and stuff. And this was also like a big film of 2017 that like everyone was talking about. I don't think it was Greta Gerwig's debut film, but it was certainly one that kind of like brought her to the limelight because it was an A24 release. And everyone knows that once you ascend to A24 indie royalty, you're good. Lady Bird is a 2017 coming of age drama about Christine Lady Bird McPherson, who wants nothing more than to go to college on the East Coast. It's, I mean, it's a coming of age drama, so that's like like the big goal that she has. But along the way, we get to learn about parenting. I love films about parenting. And this film is no exception. We get to see the inner turmoil of Lady Bird's mother and their relationship and how the fact that they are so similar personality-wise has led to some really contentious conversations between them. I mean, to just summarize how you know, tempestuous their relationship is, uh, Lady Bird throws herself from a moving vehicle rather than talk to her mother about college and her future plans. So, you know, <laughs> what can we say? But the film is very quiet. It's very gently paced. I really, I, like, I don't know if this is something that happens often, but I really like that Lady Bird is kind of a liar. She's ambitious. She wants bigger things for herself. I don't think I see that often in female characters. So I was really into seeing it uh, through her eyes. I really enjoyed what Saoirse brought to the part. Um, contrary to the issues I had with How to Build a Girl, uh, she and Beanie Feldstein very easily convey high school. It feels more like book smart in that regard, and it, it works really well for the film. It helps show just kind of how in over her head Lady Bird gets at certain points in her life. Did this film hit hard? I mean, duh, of course it does. <laughs> It again, it has that element that all like parenting movies have where eventually they have a hard conversation or they have a hard realization and those moments really hit hard. Like when Lady Bird asks her mom, do you like me? That whole scene just hurts me because why? Why is do you like me a harder question for people to answer? And why are people so quick to fire back with love when they know that's not what's being asked? Why is do you like me such a difficult question? I don't know. The film has a lot of other, you know, little arcs that happen along the way. You know, Lady Bird gets her first boyfriend and in true Catholic school tradition, he turns out he's gay. Just Catholic school things. I don't know, I didn't go to Catholic school. You know, she auditions for her school's musical. She tries to date Timothy Chalamet, who I am choosing to believe is playing himself in this movie. <laughs> For goodness sakes, the character's name is Kyle. Like, I gotta, I gotta believe that that's how he really is. What this film excels at that I really do wanna give it credit for is the way the conversations play out. The conversations feel very natural to the point that when they have awkward or uncomfortable conversations, I want to just like, it's, I'll, I'll come back later, it's fine. Because they were so expertly uncomfortable. <laughs> so it's, it's super good. The whole film is filled with really good performances. Obviously, Saoirse Ronan's really great, but Laurie Metcalf is also fantastic. She plays Lady Bird's mother, and through her, I think the struggles of being a parent are really clear, but that's really nicely balanced by Tracy Letts, who plays her dad, because through the two of them, you see the different approaches to parenting, you see the different approaches to life in general, but you also see the support that they have as a husband and wife, and I think that's a really important detail uh, to bring to their characters. Uh, Lucas Hedges as Lady Bird's first boyfriend, Danny O'Neill, really cute, really sweet. Their relationship ended up having like a lot of fun dynamics that played um, throughout the rest of the film that I really appreciated what they did with his character and what they did with his relationship to Lady Bird. I, I liked that a lot. Beanie Feldstein's super cute in this movie. She's so sweet and earnest. I just, I wanna be friends with Julie. I absolutely adore her. Such a cutie. There are so many cute scenes with the two of them, the ending of them, I just love it. There's something really special about like, no, we're going to the dance together and just, I love things like that. Also, Stephen McKinley Henderson was in this movie. He was also in Fences, another film about parenting. You should check out my review of that. Um, he was fantastic. He plays uh, Father Leviach. 
Leviach. You would think a character whose name they said in the movie I would know how to pronounce, but that's not, not the case. He was super fun. I really enjoyed what he brought to his part, what he brought to the film as a whole as kind of a warm paternal touch to this theater endeavor that Lady Bird goes through. Also, the scene of the kids all throwing fries in the diner just had so much theater kid energy. It brought me back. That was, that was fun. This is a really tightly done movie. It's 90 minutes long. It's a really well-acted, well-paced drama. Um, the different relationships that Lady Bird encounters. It is a true coming-of-age film, and I really enjoyed it. I appreciate that the soundtrack, while it definitely was period-appropriate, the film takes place in 2002, it wasn't in your face that this was the early 2000s, and I appreciated that a lot. Costumes are so great. I would wear Lady Bird's entire wardrobe in a second. Oh my goodness, that finale outfit loved that loved that so much the dress i love the dress <laughs> there were definitely a lot of things from this movie that i took away um as a lesson not necessarily like i'm older than Lady Bird's characters so some of the lessons about like coming into your own and learning how to be a person <laughs> Those, those weren't lessons that I necessarily took away from myself. But what I did take away were lessons to remember for when I'm a parent, because what, what did Lady Bird need? What do children need at this time in their life and in all times of their life in general? They need stability. They need to know that they can go to their parents for help. And I think that's something Lady Bird understands when it comes to her dad, but she doesn't always appreciate when it comes to her mom. Kids need constant reassurance. <laughs> They are constantly freaking out about how people feel about them, how people perceive them, and it is so important that as a parent, you give them that reassurance that they're doing okay. And that's something that I try to do constantly with like my brother and my sister, is just give them reassurance that it's, it's gonna work out, it's already working out, they're doing fine, it's all good. And to not freak out but also to not not freak out. So the, the, whole, the whole thing is Lady Bird wants to go to school on the East Coast and they cannot afford to do that. And in not gentle terms, Lady Bird's mom has made it clear that Lady Bird is not the kind of scholarly student who would earn scholarships to do so and that she's better off looking to go to like local college get a certificate and start working, which there's no shame in doing that, by the way. That's a totally legit thing to do. But when Lady Bird receives a letter that she's on the wait list for an East Coast college, her mom s refuses to speak to her for the rest of the evening. And that panic that Lady Bird feels as she's begging her mother to say anything terrified me. I would like, this is my vow today. I will never give my children the silent treatment because, oh my goodness, that is scarring. <laughs> and I think this, much like Fences, much like the Royal Tenenbaums as well, demonstrates that relationships can be damaged, they can be broken, but effort and understanding can heal if that goes both ways. And that is a key factor, is to always meet your loved ones halfway, to always, well, and sometimes to even go beyond halfway, to convey to them that you love them. And this film was a beautiful demonstration of all of those lessons. And I recommend it for those reasons. It was really good. I see it as a very, like, honestly, right now is the perfect time to watch it. People are starting to go back to school. That's what this film is all about, is going back to school and setting off on your own. So it was, it was a really good film. I am super pleased with it. I'm super glad that Greta has continued to work with Saoirse Ronan. Um, and I can, I hope that there can be more films like this because I, I really enjoy films like this. <laughs> like there are some people who are into like the romantic dramedies, no, coming of age stories every single time, especially when the parents get an equal footing in it. And I think that's what makes a difference for me. But yeah, I, I thought this was a great film, highly recommend it. Of course, you know, it's great. But yeah, this has been My Year in Movies. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>